Well, thank you so much for, uh, for speaking with us, General Clark. Um, so first off, uh, wh why are you here in wonderful nor northern Nevada today? Well, I'm here because uh, there's a great group of uh, Democrats here. Yeah. And um, they've given me the, the opportunity and the privilege of making some remarks, mm -hmm. getting them started in preparation for the Nevada Democratic primary. Mm-hmm. And I, I noticed in, uh, earlier today in, in Reno, you stopped by, uh, stopped by Hillary Clinton's cam campaign office. Um, so uh, are, are you excited about the uh, caucus coming up on the 20th? Absolutely. I think, you know, this is Nevada's first in the West, right? Yes. And so uh, this is a chance for Westerners to express their views on the Democratic Party and, and, uh, and who their, who their uh, candidates should be. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know er earlier this morning you talked about uh, Secretary Clinton's experience that uh, I believe you described her as the mo as a person with the most and the best uh, best experience. So, so what what convinced you to uh, to support uh, Secretary Clinton this time? Well, I've known her for over thirty years. I think she's uh, incredibly talented. She's really dedicated. She's the kind of person who will put heart and soul into the office of the presidency of the United States every single day for as long as she can stay in that office and she'll, yeah. she'll bring about the progress we need in America. She'll fix what she can fix in the most expedient and most effective way. She's a person of strong values, great integrity, and she's outlined in her campaign the things she's going to address and make sure that, that we're moving forward. And do you think she she's up to up for handling uh, handling the challenges uh, we currently face, particular uh, national security challenges, whether it be climate change or um, what's happening in the Middle East? I think she's extremely well prepared to handle national security challenges, mm -hmm. and she's the only person in the race who's ever really had any experience doing it. Yeah. So uh, I think she's going to be a phenomenal president. Yeah. And yeah. it's interesting you ask the question because, you know, as much as presidents try to focus on the domestic agenda, and yeah. they should, the one area that they can't escape is they can't escape their responsibility for guiding, directing, and executing the foreign policy of the United States. And uh, probably no president wants it when they mm -hmm. come into office. Yeah. Most of them have dreams about what they can do for the American people. But it turns out that one of the most significant and awesome responsibilities of the Office of the Presidency is foreign policy and national security, the safety of Americans at home and abroad. Yeah. So she's got to, she's got the critical experience to, to really lead us in that respect. Yeah. She'd be a great commander. <laughs> and since we're talking about foreign policy and national security, what do you think are the, the biggest challenges, biggest challenges facing us that uh, aren't making headline news right now? Well, I, I think, you know, you have to focus on what's important at the moment, and you also have to see long term. Yeah. So long term, we've got to strengthen this economy because America's strength really depends on the economy. And we've got challenges from terrorism, cybersecurity, financial system stability, the ascent of China, climate change, all these things, but they're, those are all problems that have to be dealt with over a period of many years, certainly more than one presidential term, to, to resolve these issues. The key thing is to get the economy moving, yeah. and uh, Hillary's been very positive and strong on that. She's got some concrete ideas, and, uh, and I think they'll work. Yeah, since you brought up the global economy, and specifically China, are you concerned about the jitters over there in, ter uh, in terms of um, what looks like a, a slowdown in China? Yes, it seems to, that, that there's definitely a slowdown from when China was growing uh, at a breakneck pace of 12 and 13, 10 percent per year. One year it was more than that. Uh, and uh, it's like in any big machine, the parts of it get going and yeah. it's hard to get them stopped. And so there's been overbuilding and overinvestment in things like coal-fired power plants, in the steel industry, in residential uh, housing, in some of the new areas. Uh -huh. So uh, and, and so some of the uh, heavy industry uh, that China 
was able to put in place yeah. by taking advantage of uh, very low wages as the Chinese economy has improved and wages have risen, those jobs have shifted to other countries. China has to transition its economy away from pure infrastructure investment and yeah. iron and steel and heavy industry into the service industries. Yeah. So it's making that transition. So what you're seeing is the reverberations as the economy makes that transition. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the Chinese have a very strong government. You can't look at China as though it were a conventional market economy. Yeah. Although it does have markets and people do have money and spend it, and there is a stock market. Nevertheless, the Chinese uh, Communist Party yeah. runs the government and manages the economy through its control of state institutions yeah. and state-owned enterprises. And so they set out a five-year plan that has strategic directions and they work it. Um, it's always tricky where yeah. the central direction interfaces with the market. And that's what you're seeing right yeah. now with the fluttering going on. But, uh, but I have some confidence in the Chinese Communist Party to take the economy in its new direction. And still, it still have hundreds of millions of people who want to participate in a modern economy, who are mm -hmm. trapped in, yeah. in the old-time agriculture. Those people have to come out. Yeah. And that's the new consumer demand. So they're going to make this transition. So what do you think our relationship with China should look like? I know there's another presidential candidate um, whose last name rhymes with bump, who... Uh, who says he has the, I guess, the secret sauce to, uh, to get better deals with them. Yeah, I think uh, that we have to look very carefully at how we manage China because yeah. China is a growing power and um, the Chinese leadership is very, um, they're very keen to <clears throat> expand their perimeter, their, their security perimeter. Yeah. And when they expand that perimeter, of course, that bumps against traditional Western notions of freedom of the seas. So they would like to say the South China Sea is theirs. Yeah. Their neighbors would like to contest that. And they're calling on us yeah. for assistance. This is a, a very important issue that can color relations yeah. on all other economic matters. And so uh, how we handle that is a matter that starts with our own policies at home We've got to strengthen our economy. Mm -hmm. What the Chinese respect is the American yeah. economy. And we've got to prove that our economy, our freedom, yeah. the way we start businesses, entrepreneurship is stronger here than it is there. Yeah. That's the way you really compete with China. Yeah. And I guess finally, uh, turning attention back to... Um, back to home and uh, the, the domestic front, got to ask about something that so many of our readers have been talking about lately since we brought up terrorism earlier. Um, you know, what, what else do you think we need to do in terms of what's been going on in this state with, with the Bundys and this increasing, uh, this increasing threat of anti anti-government extremists who are who have seized on this issue of public lands and you know as we saw what what's been happening in Oregon these past few days turned violent yeah I think that that um, when you are um, in positions of authority in the government <clears throat> you have to handle these cases uh, with a lot of um, with a lot of caution yeah because people's tempers fray. There's reasons why the government has done what it's done. Yeah. But in my experience, I've seen good and bad government decisions. Yeah. And, um, and I have some experience with these government agencies myself mm -hmm. in the West. So uh, I would say that it's, uh, you know, it's incumbent to figure out what the points of conflict are and to work to resolve those conflicts before it comes to a confrontation. Mm -hmm. Well, 